But right now it's time to go to the man uh, who helped engineer the comeback victory for the Houston Dash over O.L. Reign. He is the head coach. He is Juan Carlos Amores. Uh, Juan Carlos, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, thanks to you for having me. Always have a pleasure. All right, let's just talk about this. We had the pleasure of calling this game on AT&T Sportsnet. It was a heck of a comeback here. We made the mention the first half, really. O.L. Reign had dominated this. We set it up in the second half that a lot would have to change. Take us into the locker room at halftime and, and, and kind of the mood and, and, and how you addressed your team because it was a remarkable turnaround. Yeah, well, I think at halftime it was analyzing, obviously, in that short period of time that we have as coaches, um, uh, the game plan, uh, we thought it, it was working, but the problem was we were very reactive to to all the actions. We weren't really working as a team. We were going at it as, as individuals. We never gave up. I think defending defensively, we were being okay, but it was more in transitions and and winning the ball was we've been a, an issue. So we addressed a couple of points. We we spoke internally to to make sure that everyone knew that we needed to raise our level uh, individually and collectively. And we decided to go at it and and play with a bit less respect and making sure that we do what we can do, pressing high and. And when we win that ball, making sure that, that we make it count, that when it came to defending, then stay on that on the organized pact as well when we had to. And I think the players really, you know, they 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 bought into it. We we brought in Haley Hanson as well, and and the comeback was remarkable in a very difficult place. You know, and you score those two goals right at the beginning of the second half. I mean, it was a remarkable turnaround. Is it as simply as saying, let's not have that much respect for O.L. Reign? Is that really how you got better pressure on them? Or did you say to some individuals, I need you to take a few more risks? How does that happen? Because, it, you know, the first half, you guys had a hard time getting into the final third against O.L. Reign. And all of a sudden, you got them against the ropes at the beginning of the second half. You scored two goals. It's a spectacular turnaround. Yeah, I think in that we, we spoke a lot with our forward line. I think we, we were very disjointed. We needed to to work more off each other with Maria, uh, Prince, and, and Ebony. We needed more from them when, when the team was coming out of pressure. And we knew that we could create situations like even as simple as, you know, goal kicks that we know is one of our strengths to press the goal kick where we get the where we get that penalty that, that, that goes to the 1-1. One, one. And then one factor that we, we worked a lot is on, on what happened after the five minutes uh, when there is a goal in a game. It's a psychological point that, that I really looked at in my career and I think it's, it's massively important. Uh, and we're trying to get advantage of that situation, making sure that we are, that we are organized, that we are compact, that we, we stay uh, psychologically focused. and. And uh, luckily, not only in this game, but in the game before, I think we, we've been able to score two goals in less than two minutes, which is something that we actually work at training. And 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 I think in the game before, we went 3-1 and then 4-1. And in this game, we were losing. And within two minutes or three minutes, we were winning. Uh, so so focusing on those aspects. And, and to be fair, with things that we work on the training pitch, uh, I think we'll, uh, you know the girls have that belief and that trust, and they are convinced. So even if there is problems on things go against us, they, are, they, are, they know that they can turn things around and, and they did in a remarkably in a remarkable way. You know? Juan Carlos Amoros, uh, the head coach of the Houston Dash, joining us 2-1 dramatic win over O.L. Reign. Uh, they remain third in the NWSL, really in a, in a great spot right now to get into the playoffs. Um, one of the things I noticed that Laura Harvey said uh, in the pregame talk before this game, she said that she thought that you've already had an influence on the overall collective defending of the Houston Dash. How much time have you spent on that? Uh, well, we try to manage all, you know, respond collectively to all the situations of the game. And I think that defending uh, is something you have to do in a very organized way, sometimes even more than, than attacking. Uh, so we want to be aggressive when we're defending, and we know that to do that on, on the opposite half, you need to to know really well what you do, and and it's something that we worked on a lot. And I think as well, we are, it's not a secret. Like when we go a little bit on on the block, maybe high, middle, or low, we try to do it 
on the four one for one formation where I think our, the role at Ebony, our wingers and, and our three midfielders are doing fantastically well with our eight and ten, let's call it supporting supporting Ebony, the other one dropping in, helping a little bit of our holding midfielder and we're making things really really hard for, for the opposition to, to break us through. We work a lot on the defensive line. I think our line is much more compact. If you look at the statistics, we've been the team that has left in the most of sides, I think, for the last 25 games to all, all rain and the same with Gotham. So I think we, we don't have very quick defenders, so we need to be very intelligent in how we do that. And the girls are really buying into it, being brave and organized. So I think we've spent a little bit of time on the video room and also on the pitch, and we transfer that into games, which is great to see as, as a coach. No? Juan Carlos Amoros, uh, the head coach of the Houston Dash. He's 3 0, three straight games, three wins, six goals for Ebony Salmon. Before we get to Ebony, I, I would just look at and applaud the way you managed the game out. You must have felt, felt very good about the way you managed this game out with a two to one lead. Uh, you mean me as a coach? Uh, or uh, yeah, I mean, I think you must have been proud of your team the way you managed it out. Did not seem yeah. like a panic to me. You guys seemed under control. Uh, it seemed very mature. Yeah, I think we, with that, the subs had a great impact. I think Michaela, Ryan, Emily had, you know, like, and obviously Hanson, they knew the roles, what we did, what they had to do when they came on. Don't allow them to play easily and make easy decisions, especially on the back line. Uh, and I think the the team, despite a couple of moments that we already looked at, like at the, at the end of the game, we had a sleep ball and, and a couple of situations that we could have done a little bit better, but the team was very composed. They, you know, we knew that they had very good individuals. We had very good individuals and the best team was going to be the one that, that, that wins. Uh, 90 minutes is they are very molto longo, like they say in the Bernabeu, <laughs> but it happens in, in every game. So... Uh, I think it is. It, it was a you know a team performance that deserves those three points, and again gives belief and a reward to to the players and to the staff that is working a lot behind the scenes to make sure that that things can happen on on match day. You know? Juan Carlos, there was always some talk over the last couple of weeks, and I've even heard it over the last year about Rachel Daly going back to England. It, it, was this part of the move for Ebony Salmon to make sure that you had cover in Kate's Rachel Daly did go back to England, which is uh, something we found out today going back to Aston Villa. Um, no, really. I think the opportunity with Ebony was something that, that the club, in the ambition that we have to grow, we wanted to pursue. And I think it, it's paying off. He was a player that, as I've mentioned in other, in, at other times, I knew really well from even the, the championship back in England. So... I know it's someone that I could work with and we had a connection when we spoke over the phone. So I'm glad that that's paying off. And now this situation with Rachel is something that is it's been coming for the last couple of weeks. Obviously, you know, as he said on the media, I know it as well on, from my personal experience. It's hard when you've been for a, for a very long period away from home. Things happen in our personal life where people at the end of the day, we, we I always say we are people before we are coaches or, or players and in this case I think us as a club we wanted to to support that you know that that player that has done so much for the club and try to facilitate it in what we could that, that she could be reunited with her family and I think the you know she said how much she means or oh, Houston means for her how much uh, she means to Houston, she's a legend of the club, and like that, she will be welcome on Friday in, in that game against Racing in Louisville. He's Juan Carlos Amoros. Uh, we appreciate him coming on the Soccer Matters here on ESPN 97.5, presented by John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm. All right, the little bit I've gotten to know you, you, you seem like a communicator. I, I, I get the sense that you realize things like an interview like this are important for messaging and, and getting it out to a fan base. And in some cases, uh, even to your players, is, is that a big piece? And how much media did you have to do when you were in England with Spurs or Spain with Batiste? Yeah, uh, media in Europe is as important as it is here. I think for me, you know, like, uh, first of all, like we do our job for, for the fans. So I think that's uh, very, very important uh, that they are updated of, of everything with as much honesty as, as we can give them. And I'm a big fan as well of the media. Like I grew up listening to the radio with my dad since I was a very, a very young kid. And so I was always like, you know, dreaming of, of one day being on, on this side, talking to, talking to people that wanted to, to hear my story. So for me, 
is something I enjoy doing on top of obviously like every coach these days you try to to educate yourself get some training around things and and, and communicating is a big part of of convincing of of making things clear to to your players to your fans to your club and and for me it's something that that I enjoy doing even if it's obviously not my my mother language or my first language but uh, but I I try my best are you uh, being born in Madrid or are you a Madrista? Bueno, I will be in that one. I am I'm a big fan of the Madrid teams, you know, like I think that for me, I grew up in there. Yeah, I went a lot to Real Madrid. That's my family's team mainly, but my dad was, I could say that he wasn't really, really on my, my mom's side is really Real Madrid. My dad's side, he, he was really against it. And and then my brother and myself, we go, we've gone always a lot to, to Rio Vallecano. So I'm, I've been always a, a big fan of, of the football of the football in Madrid and and I, I see a sport and, and football like a way to transmit values to grow up and now have the privilege to be in a position like the one that I am in. So so yeah I'm 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 a supporter of those Madrid teams. Well Carlos Amoros, last one before we let you go. When you get a new head coaching job like this, you're three games into it, obviously winning is a great thing to help grab the attention of a new team, right? Hmm. Yeah, I think that winning is key. We prepare to to win. We are in a competitive environment. We that's that's our job. We want to win in in a way that we can transmit and connect with our fans. So when hopefully they still takes it's still away, but when those defeats come or that the the the, the fans still feel associated and related and. And you know, connected to to the team, even if if that happens, and that's what we try to do. But we believe that if we work as a unit, we know what to do. Then we're gonna be a difficult team to beat, and, and hopefully one that can keep bringing attention because of our results on the pitch. You know, and I think uh, we're in the right track, but. At this moment in time, I have to remind everyone we have done nothing. That's what we speak here at, at, at HSP. We have to keep working. The girls are in a period where we have set some targets for this month. We need to to still achieve them. We have to to compete. Uh, we've got in in eight days. We've got three very very important games, and and, and we're really focused on on making the most of it. No? Juan well, Carlos, you're a gentleman. Thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. We appreciate it. We look forward to another visit in the future. Congratulations on a big, big win over OL Reign. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenn. My pleasure to be here with you tonight. Great stuff there from Juan Carlos Amoros, uh, the head coach of the Houston Dash. We'll take a break here. Uh, Soccer Matters ESPN 97.5 is always brought to you by John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm, daspitlaw.com. <laughs> 